Hey everyone, this is Chris, sometimes known as LOTR Deck Tech, and I'm gonna switch up my format a little bit this week from what you are probably used to. Uh, things are starting to get a little busy for me, and in order to try and help out with that, I'm gonna do one video a week for a little bit. Uh, but to sort of make up for that, I'm gonna start each video off with a bit of a deck tech about the deck so that you'll know what to expect before we jump in and start playing. I'm still gonna post deck lists like usual, all of that is gonna be there, but this way we'll have a sort of better experience for the one video each week. Uh, and I think this video, this deck rather, is a pretty good one to start with uh, because it is a starter deck. It's a deck that's built using one core set one deluxe expansion, the Voice of Isengard, and one adventure pack. Uh, Celebrimbor's Secret, I'm pretty sure, although I will have to check on that when I'm not recording a video. As you might guess, um, <laughs> we're gonna start off with a hero lineup. It's gonna look pretty familiar to you if you have followed any of my starter deck videos. We've got Theodrid who is going to help us pay for a bunch of cards and allow us to be really flexible about our resources. Uh, we have Eowyn, who starts off with phenomenal willpower, which is really important for the quest we're going up against to catch an orc. And we are going to round it out with Grima, who also has decent willpower and a bit of ramp built in. And the adventure packs and deluxe expansions we have chosen allow us to include some wonderful doomed synergies like Deep Knowledge, which hopefully we will play many of. So that's the sort of foundation of the deck. Also, as you might expect from a small pool deck, we have a ton of allies. Uh, and they come in a few sort of basic flavors. We have a bunch of location control allies. I have two northern trackers, because that's as many as I'm allowed with one core set. If I could have three, I would. We have a couple of copies of Lorien Guide, uh, who is effectively a two willpower ally. Uh, but most importantly, they have two hit points, which is a big deal in some quests. And we have Snowborn Scouts who just come in, plop down a token, and then they get used as a chump defender later on. Sometimes that gets punished, but it can be useful. We also have a selection of allies with sort of stats, basically. Uh, we have Guard of the Citadel, we have Erebor Hammersmith, we have Wandering Took, and we have Wandering Ent. They're basically just there because they have access to most of the stats and a little bit of health to back it up so that they can survive incidental damage, small enemy attacks. It's a pretty good deal all around. We also have some problem-solving allies. Uh, I do have a couple of Daughter of the Nimrodels because there's not a lot of healing available here and we might have to take an attack that will put damage on Grima or something undefended on Theodrid. We also have two of the sort of biggest problem-solving allies in the game. We have the full three copies of Gandalf from the core set. And we also have, new to this cycle, Saruman. He's a little bit trickier to use effectively, but being able to sort of remove an enemy or a location from play for a little bit of a round can actually be a big deal. Uh, he can really help make progress, he can really help prevent having to engage an enemy that you know is coming. And in some scenarios, he can sort of allow you to cheat. Uh, if you are playing Journey Along the Anduin, you can pay for Saruman, plop him into play, turn the hill troll face down because he's considered out of play for the round, and then quest past stage one without having to fight the troll. Obviously, if you get to 30 threat, because of the doom from Saruman, you'll still have to fight him eventually. But you have a little bit of time to sort of fix your threat or move on before you have to deal with him, which could be a good deal. And that sort of rounds out our ally pool. 
Uh, we have a couple of attachments. We have Keys of Orthanc to try and get some resources from Grima. If we get them early enough, we'll do it, and if we don't, we'll just discard them to Eowyn. We also have one Calabrian Stone, because two resources for two willpower is a fantastic deal. And we have a bunch of events. Uh, we have some basic protection events. Hasty Stroke to cancel a shadow effect. Test of Will to cancel when revealed effects from encounter cards. Uh, we have card draw. I already mentioned Deep Knowledge, which is a fantastic card draw event, one of the best in the game. Uh, but we also have a couple of copies of Lorien's Wealth, which we're going to play through some combination of Theodred Resources and Grima's Cost Reduction. That's from the core set, just allows you to draw three cards for three lore resources. It's pricey, but we have the money to do it, so no worries there. And of course, we need a little bit of threat reduction, which is going to come in the form of two copies of Galadrim's Greeting and Sneak Attack for Gandalf. Obviously, that sneak attack could also sort of be used to help us draw more cards, but with how quickly this deck can ramp up in threat and how dangerous that can be in some quests, it's going to get used to drop threat a little more often than you normally might. All right, that should be it, so let's head into the game. Okay, here we are. I have To Catch an Orc set up already. Mugash is somewhere in this deck. I have Methodras in the staging area, we've got time counters on the quest, and we have my heroes and opening hand ready to go. Uh, this is an okay start. It has deep knowledge, which is going to help us draw into something good, hopefully. Uh, we can make some progress early with Snowborn Scout, or set up for Guard of the Citadel, and we should be able to follow that up with Lorien Guide next round. Uh, so let's see how we do. Alright, uh, Miner of the Iron Hills is not super useful here, but it is a body. And this quest is a little special. Uh, when you quest successfully, you add time counters. So it's going to be a sort of push and pull of the encounter deck trying to remove time counters and us making sure we add time counters in order to guarantee that we make the progress we need. So... Getting started, uh, first things first, let's play Deep Knowledge. Draw myself two cards, raise my threat to 28. Uh, 30 should be safe enough in this quest, so I'm going to do it again. And that was two Gandalfs. <laughs> I wish I had a sneak attack, but maybe we're just going to save resources this round, aside from one for a Snowborn Scout, which will allow me to place a progress on Methodras. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to want to play Gandalf next round, but I will be able to, which could come in handy. So let's quest. Uh, there is two threat in the staging area, so this could be pretty light, uh, which is good because I didn't add any willpower to the board. So we just have right now seven committed to the quest. And we reveal a second Methodras, which could be sort of close to a nightmare scenario because of the text on Methodras. But that's okay. Uh, we would make progress. So we add a time counter instead. I will travel to one of the Methodrases, which unfortunately makes this one a three threat location right now. We should still be able to quest past it, uh, especially if I add Lorien Guide and Guard of the Citadel. I forgot Theodred's resource already, which I would have put on Eowyn. Alright, so we're going to refresh. Remove this time counter. Uh, if this time effect goes off, it can be very bad. If you have things well under control, sometimes it's actually worth letting it go off in order to sort of refill the staging area with locations. Uh, but that's not where we're at right now, so we're going to do everything we can to avoid that happening. All right, and then we are on to the next round. Ooh, that is such a good card right now. Hmm. This is a challenge. Uh, I'm going to play Lorian Guide. 
because the Lorien Guide is going to add more willpower this round than the Northern Tracker will, which is important because we need to keep the time counters flowing. And now the question is, do I raise my threat in order to play a Guard of the Citadel? And I think at this point the answer has to be yes. So we're going to use Grimm's ability, play this Guard of the Citadel for one with Doomed One. So now my threat is at 32, but we have more willpower on the board. So now we commit to the quest. And one, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And Lorien Guide triggers its response to put a progress token on Methadras. We reveal an Orc Cave, which is a four threat location right now, thanks to Methadras. Uh, all right, that's not so bad. So my nine up against seven means we make two progress. One goes on Methadras and one turns into a time counter. When Methadras leaves play, we have to search three. So here is one, two, three. Um, I forgot Theodore's resource again, which was gonna go on Eowyn because I wanna pay for this Northern Tracker. So of these three, I'm gonna take the Handmaiden. Uh, she's a little fragile because she only has one hit point but that extra willpower is so good in this quest. All right, and now I have to travel, uh, which I think is gonna be... Let's travel to Methadras again. Uh, I don't want to explore the Orc Cave and search quite so heavily right away. I will be able to play Gandalf next round if I feel like I need it. So, refresh, remove that time counter we just placed, and move on to the next round. There's that Lorien's Wealth. Hmm. Alright, so I guess what I'm going to do right now is pay two for Galadriel's Handmaiden. I'll pay two for a Miner of the Iron Hills? I can't trigger his response, but we're gonna get some orcs eventually, and that attack and defense and health will be kinda handy. I could play Lorien's Wealth instead, but I think having the body might be better right now. And I'm not gonna trigger Grima, because we're a little heavy on the threat. I'm just gonna commit characters to the quest. I'm gonna send one, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, because we need to clear this this round, basically. Lorian Guide triggers her response to add a progress token, and I reveal a Mugash's Lair, which is a 5 threat location right now. So this is going to be 2 progress for my 11. So let me discard a card to Eowyn's ability. So I'm questing for 12. And now I'm gonna make three progress. One, two, and the third one turns into a time counter on the quest. I did explore a Methadras, so I have to search three. Uh, test a will, yes please. I have two Gandalfs in my hand already, uh, and this test of will is incredibly useful at dealing with some effects. At this point, good news. My locations are back down to their normal threat. And I'm going to travel to Mugash's lair to get rid of it. At the beginning of the encounter phase, though, I do have to reveal this card, which just gets discarded because it's not Mugash. And that's all I can really do right now. So we refresh, remove a time counter, and move on to the next round. Hmm. I have a lot of resources right now, and I don't need to quest that hard. So I think I'm going to just save a little bit. 
uh, and attempt to clear out Mugash's lair right now. We're going to send five, six, seven, eight, nine to the quest. Um, I could get a four here. Which would still work, so I think nine is fine. We're going to put the extra resource on Eowyn, uh, so that she'll be able to play Northern Tracker next round if we want. Uh, and I'm going to activate Grima's ability at the beginning of the quest phase before we reveal any cards. So that if I have to play Test of Will, it will cost zero and just raise my threat by one. So we reveal Orc Hunter. Hmm, well if I do that, I'm going to have to engage the Orc Hunter, which is a little nasty. Or it'll cost me a time counter on the quest, which is gross. Yeah, I'm going to use Test of Will to cancel that when revealed. Uh, adding extra time counters is sort of death in this quest. I forgot to trigger the Lorien Guide response, which would have put one progress on as soon as everyone was committed. And up against five, we make four progress, which is one and a time counter. So, Mugash's lair is gone, and I'm not going to travel to the orc cave right now. I don't want to add another orc to the staging area. This does mean I have to engage the orc hunter, who will get a shadow card, uh, and I'm going to defend with Grima. Grima should survive, and I will be able to play healing next round. That is a good card to see as a shadow, because it's a really annoying treachery. So, Grima is going to take one damage. Uh, and unfortunately, I can't fight back, but that's a problem that we can solve. So, refresh, remove a time counter, move on to the next round. Ooh, Glaywine is good, though. Okay. This round, we're going to do a couple of things. One, two, three plays a Daughter of the Nimrodel. Uh, I need to be careful about when I exhaust her, but she is a fantastic healer, if your heroes are the ones taking damage. And I guess the question is, do I Gandalf right now, or do I play a Northern Tracker? And I think I'm going to play Northern Tracker, which is going to use the Grima ability, and cost me all my spirit resources, uh, but that should be okay. He's a good fighter, solid defender, and I don't need to quest terribly hard in order to uh, make progress this round. Like, Lorien Guide is not actually adding very much. So, let me quest. Send five, six, seven to the quest. We have three in the staging area, so this is potentially slightly risky, but I don't have an active location in the way. So my seven up against seven means that I would tie uh, unless I discard this Lorien's Wealth to boost Eowyn's Willpower to five. So my eight versus seven is just enough to make one progress. I will travel to Mugash's Lair. And at the beginning of the encounter phase, I discard that Wandering End. Orc Hunter gets a shadow card, and now the question is, what does it take for me to kill him? One, two, three, four is good enough. Uh, so let's, let's defend with Snowborn Scout. Okay, no shadow effect. Snowborn Scout does die, but this means Grima was not at risk of taking any extra damage. There are some shadow effects that are pretty nasty. So, one, two, three, four, kills an orc hunter and means that we are safe for now. Uh, all right, and I forgot to add a resource from Theodrid, which would go on Eowyn because that's just pretty much who it always goes on. So, let's move on to the next round. 
Oh, there is a card that I am so glad to see. All right, one, two. Let me play a Wandering Took. Just stats. I'm going to use Grima's ability. Give the next card I play Doomed One. And put Glaywine into play, who I will use to immediately draw a card. It's a little late for Keys of Orthanc, but that's all right. And I have a sneak attack for Gandalf, which is going to be very handy. So let's, I forgot to take one of these off last round. Let's commit to the quest. I have five, six, seven, eight right now. I only need to make two progress total because Lorien Guide is gonna make one for free. So if I send eight, and I can discard one. Uh, let's send nine, just to sort of be sure. All right, Lorien Guide's response triggers, puts one on Mugash's lair. Reveal another orc cave. So my nine up against six is three progress. One and the extra two turn into a time counter. Uh, this round, I can travel to an orc cave. My board is getting pretty big. Uh, and I have Sneak Attack to sort of protect me against the worst outcomes. So let's do that. And travel to Orc Cave. And when I do, I have to see if we get an Orc. <laughs> oh, there's some good luck. We do not get an Orc, so that card is just discarded. It means I don't have to sneak in Gandalf this round. Means that when we find Mugash in the near future, I will be able to, so that is all fantastic. I forgot to do this last round, so let's Daughter of the Nimrodel to heal Grima. And we're gonna move on. Refresh, remove a time counter, and we are on to the next round. Clayline draws me another card, that's a good one. I think what I'm going to do is use Grima's ability to Doomed One. Put this Wandering Ent into play because it's got such good stats. Uh, and I will go one, two, three, four, five to play a Gandalf. I'm going to use him to drop my threat back down to 36, which is quite high. But having him in play means I'll be able to defend against Mugash next round if I, or this round, if I find him in the Orc Cave. And it should just, in general, be quite helpful. I am going to try and save up for this second Lorien Guide as well. Uh, two free progress on any location we travel to is a huge boon. So, let's quest. Uh, one, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten against three in the staging area and I need to make four progress so that is ten I can boost it to eleven uh, let's send Grima this round so I'm gonna quest for twelve Lorian guide puts one progress on this orc cave and we reveal a prowling wolf uh, that is a good one to have Gandalf in play for because he can defend or just have enough attack to kill it so, all right, my 12 up against six would be six progress. Three on the orc cave, and one turns into a time counter. I also search five. One, two, three, four, five, and I forgot to add my Theodred resource, which would be on Eowyn. I did not find Mugash, so that's actually kind of nice. Uh, out of all of these, Test of Will is good, but the treacheries I'm the most worried about are gone. Calabrian Stone is nice willpower. I think I'm going to take Faramir instead. Uh, he has good stats for combat, and I can use him to turn all these allies into a bit of a questing force. <sighs> now the question is, do I travel to the Orc Cave or not? The decent chance I would get an Orc from it. I'm not sure I'm ready for two enemies. 
So let's skip that. Move on to the encounter phase where I am forced to engage the Prowling Wolf. He currently has two attack, uh, which could hurt, but is probably not that bad. So let's defend with Northern Tracker. Well, I guess I could have traveled to the Orc Cave. This does nothing as a shadow effect, so Northern Tracker takes no damage. And Gandalf's four attack is enough to kill the wolf. Pretty good shape right now. We refresh, remove a time counter, and discard Gandalf. And then we're on to the next round, which is, for those of you who have not been keeping count, turn eight. Uh, I'm gonna use Glaoline to draw myself a card. Another Keys of Orthanc is fine. They're pretty good Eowyn fodder, like I said. So, I am going to spend three to put a Lurian Guide into play. I'm going to start saving up for this farm here. I have one for sneak attack if I need it. And I don't need to make much progress this round in order to get a time counter, so let's be a little light. Five, six, seven... Uh, let's make it eight committed to the quest. Northern Tracker's response triggers, which puts a progress on Orc Cave. And we reveal a Methadras Orc. Uh, all right, this one is obnoxious, but probably not the end of the world. So my eight up against six means I do make the progress to turn one into a time counter. I am not going to travel to the Orc Cave, but I am forced to engage this Orc, who will get a Shadow card. I forgot Theoded Resource, which goes on himself. Uh, Alright, let me count attack. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in play right now, which is just what we need to kill the Orc. So, I am going to use Grima's ability to give Sneak Attack Doomed 1 and play it for free. I'm going to put Gandalf into play. And I'm going to drop my threat down to... Now, you know what? Let's just draw three cards. That's a good one to get. All right. So... Gandalf is going to defend, and I have to take one of these cards at random and shuffle it into my out-of-play deck, which is going to be Faramir. Kind of stinks, but that's okay. Attacking enemy makes an additional attack after this one. That could hurt. Could hurt a lot. All right, well, Gandalf takes one point of damage. Um, I'll defend this second attack with Daughter of the Nimrodel. Daughter of the Nimmerdale is very dead. It was a quite valiant sacrifice from her. But as previously counted, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight attack. Just enough to kill the orc. And we're not in a significantly worse place than we were before. Refresh the end of the round, remove a time counter, and move on to the next one. Okay, that is a card that I like, but I think I'm going to play a Wandering Ent first. It does come into play exhausted. Uh, let me use Glaewine to draw another card. I'm almost at the end of the deck. Let's put in a Snowborn Scout. Adds a token to the Orc Cave. I think I will spend two for a guard of the citadel. Uh, one of the farmers is in the discard pile and the other one is in here. So we sort of have to assume we're gonna go without him. And now we quest. One, five, uh, six, seven, eight. Eight should be good enough right now. 
Northern Trackers responds triggers and puts a progress token on the Orc Cave. And we reveal Orc Territory. All right, that's not bad. So I'm going to look at all of these cards. It's going to give me a glimpse into what's left in the deck. I think I'm going to take Methadross. It's a pretty mild one. And I'm going to try and explore the Orc Cave without getting one of these Orcs in play. Uh, we have, what, one, two, three, four, five, six Orcs out of 16 cards, which is not bad, actually. And the secondary effect of this would trigger, but there are no Orcs engaged with me, so I don't have to take any attacks, because I've been being very diligent about killing them. All right, so my eight up against five is enough to make a time counter. And I will travel to Methadras. It'll give me a little bit longer uh, before I have to deal with Mugash, most likely. So refresh, lose a time counter, move on to the next round. That's a fun one. All right, we can spend one for Hennemarth River Song. Two for a Galadriel's Handmaiden, dropping my threat by one. And I wish I had a sneak attack, but I don't. So we're probably just going to have to try and rely on, I guess, chump blocking Mugash, essentially. Hmm. All right. There's four threat in the staging area, and I don't really want to pop the orc camp right now. Although if there's a sneak attack in here, that could be really good. Now I'm gonna need 12 to kill Mugash, which is a little rough. So let's quest somewhat light. Uh, five, put this resource on Eowyn. Six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, eleven. And I will trigger the responses of these Lorian guides. Place two progress on Methadross. And we reveal Orc Hunting Party, which surges into Take Cover. Uh, I will remove a time counter instead and surge into Broken Lands, which is absolutely fine. So I sent 11 up against three, seven. So that would be four, one, and then one more. So Methadras is cleared. One, two, three. Of these, we take Faramir. And I will travel to, let's see. So orcs are six out of 13. So this is a 50-50 shot to get an orc. Uh, they're not revealed, though, so no one revealed effects. Yeah, le uh, no, let's travel to the Broken Lands. I can pop Orc Cave whenever I want by sending Northern Tracker to the quest. Nothing to fight, nothing else to do right now. Uh, let's actually Hennemarth River Song to peek at this top card. It's an Orc Hunter. So we're gonna have a surge next round, basically. Which is okay. Uh, that's not the worst enemy to get. So, refresh. Remove a time counter. We're on to the next round. Glaywine will draw me a card. There's a second Northern Tracker. Oh, I can't play yet, but I will be able to play soon. All right, I think I'm gonna save everything this round. And next round, I can think about Northern Tracker and maybe Gandalf. So I know a lot 
is going to be coming out this round. I have at least two plus whatever the next thing is. So let's assume there's about six coming. So up against nine, 15. One, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I think that should be good enough. I will trigger the responses of both Lorraine guides to place two progress on broken lands. And we reveal Orc Hunter, which is going to surge into an Orc Skirmisher. All right, that's fine. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight against my 16. One, two, three, four. And enough to put a time counter on searching for Mugash. Broken Lands does not help me do searching. Uh, do I want to risk an Orc Cave Orc? I have some decent defenses this round. I don't have any healing though. And I don't have any ability to kill these enemies. I think I will leave it and next round plan on committing Northern Tracker, most likely. So, forced to engage both of these. Orc Hunter comes down first, and then Orc Skirmisher is going to do three damage to... Get rid of the Snowborn Scout, that's not a problem. I could also lose a Handmaiden. Still need to defend two attacks, and I'm definitely gonna chump the Orc Skirmisher. All right, let's get rid of a Handmaiden. One, two, three. Goodbye. Shadow, shadow. All right, Orc Hunter's only attacking for two, so I'll defend with a Wandering Ent. Sorry, only attacking for three. So Ent is gonna take one damage. <sighs> Uh, and let's Snowborn Scout this one. All right, we remove a time counter. That's annoying, but it's okay. Do you have a bit to fight back? What, one, two, three, four, five, six? Which is actually just enough to kill the Skirmisher, so let's do that. And this round is gonna hurt a little bit because we're about to reveal two more encounter cards, but based on the timing, they might do nothing. So let's find out. Forgot my favorite resource this time, which would have gone on Eowyn. So, refresh. Remove a time counter, which is going to reveal two encounter cards and put two time counters back. So here we go. One, two are revealed. So we do surge <laughs> into another orc skirmisher. All right, well, you know, maybe that was not the best, but we survived. Uh, now we have a lot less time counter pressure going forwards, and we're close to running out of shadow cards, which is nice. So on to the next round. Lore of Imladris, interesting. All right, I think in this instance, I am going to spend four, put a Northern Tracker into play. And this is my last opportunity to Gandalf, basically. But we are going to play Gandalf. Uh, and I am going to have Gandalf do four damage to this Orc Skirmisher. Because he's big threat and he has a lot of attack. So, up against seven in the staging area, uh, I will probably pop one orc cave, which is going to most likely spawn the Mugash. So that'll be eight, plus whatever's next is probably four, so 12. Uh, one, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, Sure, 12, we can commit Glay Wine. 12. I can boost it to 13. 
I have a decent attacking force for the round. This could be gross, though. All right, Northern Tracker's response triggers, places a progress on the orc cave and one on this orc cave. This is explored, so we're gonna search five. One, two, three, four, five. Well, there is Mugash. I'm going to take sneak attack. Uh, these all get discarded. And I was gonna put Theodore's resource on Eowyn for sort of Galatrim's greeting purposes. Although now I kind of wish I had it for sneak attack. Uh, although I could use Grima to play sneak attack for free at a cost of threat, which I might have to do. All right, so that was that. And then I have to reveal an encounter card for the Prowling Wolf. All right, I sent 12, or four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. I actually did just enough to push us on to stage three, which comes into play with three time counters on it. All right, uh, I basically can't travel to Orc Cave because if I get another enemy, bad things will happen. And I am forced to engage all of these enemies. All right, here is a Prowling Wolf and an orc hound, which is going to force me to exhaust a character, which uh, after an exhaustive scan is gonna be one of these guards of the Citadel and a Mugash. Good news is shadow, 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 shadow. They all get shadow cards because there's one left in the encounter deck right now. But okay, uh, this is gonna hurt my threat really bad. We're just going to have to live with it. I'm going to use Grima's ability. Give the next card I play, Doomed One. I'm going to play Sneak Attack for free. Bring Grima into play. And he's going to remove a non-unique enemy for the time being. Uh, which this round is going to be this Orc Hunter. So I just don't have to deal with him at all. All right, and then we have to do some math. I need 12 to capture Mugash, which could be, here is 10, 12, sort of segregated over there. It means all the rest of these characters can defend. Okay, uh, so let's have Wandering Ent defend against this Prowling Wolf. Force me to exhaust a character, which will be Guard of the Citadel. But Wandering Ent takes no damage. Northern Tracker defends against this Orc Hound. And he will take one damage, which I'm just going to put on this other Northern Tracker because it's in the front. And now for Mugash. I will defend with Miner of the Iron Hills because it is by far the least useful of these allies. I really hope this shadow effect is nothing bad, and it's not. So, Mugash absolutely destroys the Miner of the Iron Hills, but I have 1, 6, 10, 11, 12, which is enough to defeat Mugash, and I'm going to attach him to Grima, I believe. I could attach him to Theodrid. I basically don't need the resources right now, and that extra one willpower might make a difference. Can't afford to play the Faramir that I kind of want. Yeah, let's attach him to Theodrid. So he is captured. And I have two attack, which I can use to swing back, which isn't enough to kill anything, so I'm just not going to bother. End of combat. This Orc Hunter comes back into play loses his shadow card. Uh, Saruman is going to come back to my hand. We refresh. Dropping a time counter. Oh, I think I forgot to bump up my threat by three for Saruman, so one, two, three. And a nice 46. 
Uh, Gandalf gets discarded. And I, you know, clean up my allies a little bit. Theodred is exhausted because Mugash forces him to not ready. And we're going to see if we can win right now. Basically. So, on to the next round. <laughs> oh, this is fun. Um, hmm. Hmm. I think I need to Saruman. It shouldn't be any doomed. So one, two, three. This is Saruman. Bringing my threat to 49. Uh, if I had had Theodred ready instead of Grima, I could generate an extra resource for Galadrim's greeting this round, and then it would be not a problem in the slightest. But since I don't, uh, we have to Saruman. Saruman is going to remove this orc cave from the game temporarily. So there's no threat in the staging area. And I'm in a quest like crazy because I need to make 15 progress right now. Uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and we will discard Keys of Orthanc for 25. Uh, Doomed One will destroy me. Anything else is probably okay. And we reveal Methodras, which is a two threat location that does nothing. So I make 23 progress. And that is to catch an orc with a deck built mostly from a single core set. Just in the nick of time, we have captured Mugash. All right, everyone, hopefully you enjoyed this look at a starter deck built around Grima and the voice of Isengard. Thanks for watching.